Hello, I'm Jason with CodeLearner.com, and here in this lesson we're going to move beyond the command line that we were doing in the last section. We're going to learn how to install this Eclipse Integrated Development Environment, the IDE. Uh, it's basically going to give us an enhanced way to type our source code in, compile our programs, so that really you don't have to use those command line tools ever again. I just wanted to show you in the last section how to do that so that you really know what's happening behind the scenes. So uh, what you can do is just go into Google and type in Eclipse Java IDE. So type that in. All right, so both of these links will really work. I really am going to go ahead and click on the second one, eclipse.org slash download. You can type that directly into a browser. So here we have uh, the page where we can download the Eclipse IDE. Uh, there's lots of different choices, and I think I told you before, there's Java Enterprise Edition, there's Embedded, there's other things. All you want is the Eclipse IDE for Java developers, which is kind of the, the standard package. Notice there's also an Eclipse uh, IDE for C and C++ developers if you're going to develop C code sometime in the future. So for this, all we want to do is download Windows 64-bit because I'm on a 64-bit computer. And you go and download it, and it'll go into your uh, hard drive. I've already downloaded this guide, so I'll show you what the file looks like. Eclipse Java Juno SR2 Win32 uh, 64 for 64-bit system. So the way the Eclipse thing works is there's really not much of an installation. You don't really unpack it and, and click install. Basically if you look inside of here there's an Eclipse directory there's all this stuff. It's the Eclipse ac application which is really the the actual IDE. So the bottom line is just extract this zip file. This is a zip file. Go ahead and extract it to whatever directory you want on your computer and that's where your uh, IDE is going to reside and then you can just put a shortcut to it on your desktop uh, there. So go ahead and unpack it anywhere you want. doesn't matter. Create a directory, put it somewhere and then uh, go and um, uh, double click on that executable, that Java Eclipse application. When you double click on the executable you're going to get a splash screen that pops up and it's going to ask you to select a workspace. Um, a workspace is a folder that's going to contain your programs is the bottom line. So you can read all this stuff and and try to understand uh, you know what it is but the bottom line is it's a place where we're going to store our code. So generally you're going to have one directory on your computer where you plan to keep all of your Java programs. And so for for this for the purposes of what we're doing here I want to go down to Java Mastering Java Volume 1 I want to go to Lesson Workspace because I'm going to create all of my lessons inside of the workspace located there. I'm going to hit OK and then when I do that it's going to launch the workbench, create everything and you're going to get a welcome screen that looks something like this. Now I encourage you, you can click the overview and get an overview, find out what's new, you can try some samples out later, you can go through some tutorials, probably not a bad idea. Uh, but really the workbench is, is really what you're going to use the program for. And so when you do that, this is what Eclipse really looks like. And it, if you notice, it looks quite a bit like the um, uh, screenshot that we showed in the original slideshow. Basically, at a 100,000 foot level, you're going to type your code in here. And we're going to use the uh, buttons here to, to run the code. And we'll be able to see if we have any errors and so forth. Now the one thing I do want to tell you before we close the lesson is since you told uh, Eclipse where your workspace was going to be, let's go and take a look at that uh, directory. I put it under Mastering Java Lessons Workspace. Notice that Eclipse created a metadata directory. This is just some stuff that Eclipse uses to keep track of all the projects and Java files that we're going to create in a minute. Um, I'll give a little bit more of an overview of Eclipse and how to run you know, simple programs as we go forth. Just know that you know, there's a lot of functions and features of this guy. I mean, this is like a full-blown development environment. Lots and lots of um, capabilities to, to trace through your code, to find errors, and all kinds of things that are really beyond the scope of really what you should do when you're first learning Java for the first time. We are going to use Eclipse so that we can type our programs in quickly, run them, and see what the output is so we can learn Java. As you get more proficient, you may have uh, use for some of these other features uh, that are in here. You're welcome to go look in the help. You're welcome to go you know, look elsewhere for tutorials of how to use every feature of this program.
program. We're not going to use every feature of the program. We're going to create simple Java files, teach you the logic, let you practice the examples, and so on. So now that you have it installed, go ahead and follow me on to the next section where we will uh, create our first basic example uh, program from within the Eclipse editor interface. And you'll see how easy it is to do and how uh, Eclipse keeps track of all the files for you.